Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. What I have planned uh, today is uh, have my two young uh, black mamba friends here. Uh, the relatively friendly one and the not so friendly one. So, first thing we'll do is, uh, we're, I'm transplanting them to uh, another cage. I'll let them cohabitate. Um, here you go, bud. This is the semi-friendly one. Here you go. You even have a branch to climb on. Place to hide. I'll get you guys a water dish. Uh, here you go. How's that? Huh? How's that? What is that? Is that pretty nice, huh? You have a place to bask and everything. Okay, you can explore around. You just uh, please stay in there while I fetch your uh, your sibling, who is not so friendly. Hello, what are you doing? What are you doing? There's this guy is a bit bigger, only because uh, he eats uh, really well. Hello. Oh, is that a friendly uh, tongue flick or what? Okay, the other one is still in there. Hello. I know. You're on a hook. You're on a hook, bud. Oh, come on. Oh, that wasn't very polite. Well, at least we're not getting a neck flare today. Here, why don't you uh, hang out right there with your sibling? Come on, you better balance yourself. You're going to go plopping off there. I'm not sticking my hand in there to catch you. There you go. Oh, we got a little flattening of the neck. All right, relax, relax. You know, I'm not taking a swing at you or anything. Oh, you're still not so friendly. Hello, how you doing? Yeah, it's just me. It's just me, and that's just him. My, we're flattening our neck today too. Oh no, I hope it's not catchy. I hope it's not catchy, guys. Oh, look at that neck flattening out. You have a cage mate. For a little while, This you guys will outgrow this fairly rapidly, but this is just a, a temporary uh, fix. I want to get uh, the bigger guy under some heat and uh... Oh. they're mutually uh, discovering one another there we go. Now be nice, don't bite your sibling. Now people continue to ask me, are snakes uh, immune to their venom? Uh, the question is, uh, they're resistant uh, to venom of their own species, but not immune. Um, you know, it's been demonstrated, you know, in many uh, scientific papers that uh, a, a good example is is the uh, Malayan pit viper. Uh, the venom within the same species, and it's just one monotypical species, 
uh, calosalasma that uh, examining their venom throughout their range, their venom uh, is different from one area to another. Therefore, the antivenin, unless it's produced uh, uh, using venom from snakes from different areas, is not uh, totally effective against uh, uh, that same species. Well, this is interesting. I've never seen two uh, black mambas stare them each other down. I've had multiple black mambas in a cage. I mean, that generally doesn't seem to be an issue. Oh, come on. Behave, behave. Um, going back to the story, um, so if the snakes are feeding on different things as they would throughout the range, their venom is different because it needs to act on a different prey item. Subsequently, that difference in venom, if you take a, a Malayan pit viper from the northern part of its range, and then you take one from the southern part of its range and they bite each other, uh, they may not be so resistant and end up killing one another. Uh, the second fact is that uh, some of the enzymes, uh, they don't seem to necessarily have uh, uh, a lot of resistance to, and subsequently, uh, the enzyme action will cause uh, some tissue destruction and if that happens to be in a vital place uh, like the uh, head or the, the lungs, the heart, the intestine, uh, that could uh, turn out very badly uh, uh, in the end. And thirdly, it's not so much of a problem with the lapids, but certainly with viperids, if one of those long fangs ends up in the head, in the brain, or in the heart or lungs or something, or a major vessel, uh, that could spell doom for the snake, especially when you have something that causes uh, uh, changes in coagulability of blood. So uh, that's a brief description of a very complex problem. Uh, I hope uh, you sort of get the get the drift. Oh, there's two uh, uh, coffin heads together. Okay, and you're puffing. Do you have a, probably, I, I'm hoping not, that uh, this little guy, since he's doing a lot of throat puffing, uh, didn't catch a respiratory infection because it was rather cool for him. Uh, so, it's okay, it's just you. Black Mamba Cam. There you go. There you go. All right, well, let's let these guys sort of uh, uh, hang out and uh, get accustomed to one another and uh, warm up, and uh, I'll feed them a little bit uh, later. This guy's on his second gecko. Unfortunately, he's turned his face the other way. Now you can't see it. Down and to the left where I am, there's one Ekis, uh thinking about eating his gecko and another one that ate a fuzzy uh, earlier and my fingers can't go there. I know, I know, you're, you're all upset. You're all upset. Look at that. You're a little saw scale. Look at that. No, I don't want to take your gecko. No, I'm not going to take your gecko. I know I'm big and I'm bad. Look at me. I'm Viper Keeper, huh? Look at that. You'd put me in my place if you, I gave you the chance. Here, come on. Eat your gecko and calm down. Come on. This one and uh, the other run to the uh, the group 
uh, they easily get distracted and have ADD and all they want to do is get them to eat and it's tough sometimes come on come on I'm not gonna bother you just eat your gecko eat your gecko huh? come on come on oops I'm sorry come on come on yeah, you can eat your gecko. Someone else will eat your gecko, no problem. Come on. Come on. Come on. There you go. Why are you turning your head? You're just like a little kid. Well, that was a very nice bubble. Just like a little kid. No, I don't want to eat my geckos. Can we make that into a breakfast cereal? Geckos. Viper Keeper approved. Come on. Come on. Open your yap. Come on. All right, look, I'm going to leave your gecko there, and you can uh, eat it. But I'm going to leave the camera trained on you. Maybe we can watch you eat your gecko. How's that? Now I'm just going to fade away in the distance so he uh, relaxes. What are you doing, bud? <laughs> yeah. Huh? Well, come on, eat your gecko. Come on, I don't have all night to hang out here. I've got other things to do. I've got to call some people. Huh? Come on. You know, one of my biggest fears uh, with these guys. Uh, is leaving them unattended because especially when the runts are feeding because one of their big uh, siblings could easily come along and eat the gecko from the other end and then eventually engulf uh, uh, the runt uh, and devour it uh, before the runt knows what the hell's happening. So I don't like to necessarily leave uh, the runts feeding uh, unattended. Here, runt. Come on. You know, I don't know if you can see it. There's another echis in the foreground. He's stung flicking uh, the gecko. Come on, you produced a lot of uh, saliva. Now put it that to use. Come on. Yeah. I know, I know. Come on, you take it. See, he's small enough to be eaten by his brethren. But he certainly is a feisty little guy. Huh? Come on. Come on. Okay, well, I'm going to pull out, but what I'm, <laughs> I very seldom do that, actually, but uh, uh, what I'm going to do is this guy, who was eyeing his brother's uh, meal, is too close for comfort, so what I'll do is I'll move him out of the way, close the door. And maybe that guy will eat his gecko. Now I'm hoping you guys get to see uh, one of the Boomslang's uh, uh, fangs. 
they're pretty pretty close to daggers they're not fangs uh, this little guy uh, went up to uh, take it there you go you can see them those are large they don't need to chew on you they just need to stab you with those suckers but uh, <laughs> I was trying to, to give it to the green one in the back corner with the unusual attitude and the little juvenile here uh, went up and snagged it but he was reluctant to feed uh, on the ground uh, and he was actually quite foul earlier when he first saw me but I think he realizes that I might actually uh, have some benefit other than to harass him. You want another one, huh? You want to try another one? You know, uh, bringing a lot of animals in uh, for whatever reason I bring them in, whether they're for personal uh, uh, or uh, other use. Here, you want this? Huh? Go ahead. Go ahead. There you go. Good job. Good job. Uh, it's very stressful for me, as well as the animals, because uh, I'm responsible for their well-being and to have a large collection and add a hundred snakes in a week is uh, very difficult uh, by myself with a full-time job and keeping you YouTubers happy with videos and stuff. Um, you know, because there's so many snakes that require intensive care, my own snakes get sort of uh, put in the, on the back burner uh, and I notice them being a bit jealous. So, you know, forgive me if I get a little cranky uh, occasionally because I really don't have time to answer a lot of questions and especially dumb ones uh, uh, because I would rather be spending my time taking care of the animals and making sure that they're well. Uh, now, this guy, it's, it's a notorious thing for boom slangs to rub their nose trying to get out of the bag in captivity or the wire cages or whatever they're kept in over there, as well as, you know, having wire uh, in my cages, uh, that they actually will wear their, their nose down, right? I've seen it as far as their eye sockets. Now look at that, you know, what he's doing. Well, when he looks this way, and you'll notice that he actually has worn his nose down to the tip of the bone in his skull. That little white spot there is the actual front part of his skull bone. Uh, his nostrils have been obliterated. That's why he's mouth breathing right now. Uh, he no longer has a way of getting air into his, his mouth so he can suck it down his trachea without opening his mouth. So, uh, you know, he's feeding well. He, I brought him back from death once. Hopefully, uh, uh, you know, his body will repair and regenerate. Uh, but there's, you know, no guarantee that, uh, that he makes it long term. Uh, but, you know, I am going to give him every opportunity to, uh, uh, to grow, become an adult, and reproduce that I possibly can.